Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Tojo, and I'm a research scientist working at Yahoo Labs London. This is, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the project, uh, the hyperlink project I did uh, in the University of Edinburgh. The no more for protecting predicting referenced uh, link routing scholarly articles for proactive power. So as we're all researchers, we publish papers. Uh, as here, there's uh, the most famous paper uh, from the Google founders uh, in the uh, 1998 World Web Conference. As you can see in the abstract, there's a link uh, directing to the Google uh, website at that time. So uh, as we have investigated preliminary in this paper, and also there are more full extent uh, hyperlink project uh, uh, plus one paper, that we found that uh, the scenario of scholarly articles reference web resources are becoming more and more popular. So if you look at here, uh, here uh, is the time of publication date of the uh, scholarly articles uh, read uh, chronologically. And here is the, the counts. You can see from the Elsevier collection, uh, the publication increased slightly, but the number of referenced uh, web resources increased dramatically over the years. So uh, as I want to, I'm a researcher, I would like to uh, understand a bit more context of uh, what is the website they, they did in 1998. So I clicked this link, I found this page. Uh, I accessed it yesterday. And, but uh, when I use the Internet Archive, I try to find out uh, the most closest version to the one that the author has published this. I found the content is quite different um, from today. So this is not surprising. We call this as content drift, uh, which uh, endanger the future researcher to uh, access the citation context of the web resources that uh, the author has um, cited. So just uh, take another example. Uh, there's a more links in the reference section. So uh, when we click this link, we found there's a whole, a whole, whole, whole error, that, which means that uh, the reference web content is actually not available anymore on, online. So we call this a uh, link rot problem. And this is more uh, severe than our previous case because we haven't got uh, any information at all. To get a bigger picture, uh, still, the x-axis is the uh, chronological order of the publication. The y-axis is, is the link rot percentage. Uh, so tracking on this uh, yellow line, you can see that, uh, not surprisingly, as the publication date is more closer to the present, the link rot rate is uh, decreased. But still, we found out there are, uh, it ranges from 25% uh, to 65 percent, which is a really uh, big percentage. Luckily, the Internet Archive actually, Wayne Machine has archived this, so if the author, if the future researchers do want to know what is the citation context of that web link, you will still be able to do it, so, so far so good. But we have another link in this. When we access it, we found out that not only that it is not available online, but also uh, any of there is no, not at of all, any, any of the archival solution have archived this link, which means that the citation context of that scholarly publication is missing all. So to look at the bigger picture again, uh, we found uh, that uh, around 30% of actually the web uh, reference web resources are completely rotten, which means they are not available online, they are also not available on, in any of the archival solutions. Which is, uh, it, it, it is a severe problem here for the future researchers. So that means we need to preserve. Therefore, uh, this is the focus of our paper. So, is that, uh, so we want to develop a machine learning uh, techniques to try to see can we accurately predict the, the link rot uh, likelihood of all those links that are referenced uh, in the scholarly articles. And so, so if, we have, if we can predict that, can we use that, uh, the, this information to uh, guide the archival solution to prioritize for actively archiving the links that are more likely to be brought in. So uh, in this work, we only focus on link rot. Uh, the content drift is uh, that in the future work. So just to give you examples so of those are the links uh, that are referenced, are ranked by the predicted uh, link rot rate uh, uh, probability that, uh, from our learned predictor. And then we can just uh, guide 
integrated this into the into that archive machine so that they could uh, using this rank list to archive the, the link that are more likely to be wrong. So uh, as I said, we develop we try to develop a machine learning predictor. So uh, we need to uh, engineer a set of features to characterize the link wrong problem. So we hypothesize there are two types of uh, features could be useful. One is the, from the scholarly article, and the other is from the link themselves. So we hypothesize that, uh, uh, for example, uh, the link uh, uh, originated from the computer, from a given subject such as computer science might be more likely to be rotten than education, let's say. And also, as we, uh, we have shown before, the links that are uh, more closer to the uh, from the article that are published uh, closer to the present are less likely to be rotten. So whether the publication is uh, open to access or not, and also the quality of the publication could be uh, could have an impact. Uh, for the link-based feature, so the we hypothesize that the highly uh, the high quality link might be less likely to be rotten. If the link is more specific, i.e. that uh, it has more depth or longer, it might be more likely to be rotten. And also where the link it appears in, in the article might have an effect. If the link appears in the abstract, it might be less likely to be rotten than the links that appear in the footnote. And also, oh, what is the link, uh, the content type of the link would make a difference. Uh, the code might be more likely to be rotten than the data. And those are the hypotheses. To instantiate this, those features, uh, we use some, you might not be able to read this, but uh, I'll just uh, briefly mention how we uh, do this. Uh, the idea is that we just use the current data we are easily to obtain. So this is a, a really a proof of concept. Uh, more features can be developed for more um, quantific, uh, ways to quantific, quantify those features could also be instantiated. So this can be much improved uh, in the future. So for the subject, the publication data, open access status, we just use the Elsevier uh, collection of metadata to do that. Uh, to quantify the quality of the publication, uh, we crawl the H5 index of the, uh, of the publication from the Google Scholarly metrics to, um, to quantify the publication based on uh, citation quality. Uh, for the link-based features, for the, uh, to quantify the the link quality, we use the page, domain page rank uh, by a subset of the, uh, the whole web, uh, which is a group web data set uh, developed by the CMU uh, IR community. Uh, the link depth, we just use our uh, URL extractor and the standard tokenization tool. For, to obtain the position of the link, we just use the XML annotation. And to obtain the type of uh, the content type of the link, we actually use the uh, open source uh, content-based uh, uh, machine learning classifier. So now I have uh, uh, introduced the features. Now um, talk a bit more about the classifier and the training training the thing. So we basically sample a random sample of uh, 10,000 links uh, with their role labels. We we'll make sure they are balanced uh, so that we have uh, the same equal number of uh, positive and negative examples for training the classifier. Uh, we just use the SVM with the default setting uh, as a classifier and use five uh, fold cross validation to train the classifier. And then for evaluation purpose, we uh, use the standard uh, classification metric, AUC, the area under the ROC curve on the test. So now uh, we report the results. So overall, using all the features, you can see uh, we can obtain a reasonable AUC of 0.72, which is not amazing, but still reasonable. That uh, shows that it's useful without even without many features. So we also did a, a feature automation study, which means that uh, uh, for each of the feature, we reduce them, uh, reduce one of it, and then we try a new classifier, and then we compare the performance with, uh, of it uh, against the one with all the features so that we know the feature impact. So we found that in general, the link-based feature is more useful uh, than the, the uh, scholarly article um, features. So the one that I bought uh, uh, have a significance here. 
And the other thing that uh, for each individual feature, we found that uh, the year of publication has a bigger uh, impact, which is not uh, surprising as we have demonstrated before. Uh, we also did another evaluation using the output of the ranking provided by the, our uh, learned predictor. So uh, based on current archival solution, only 60% of the linked uh, archive for those rotten links, but uh, based on uh, the, our predictor, you, uh, by archiving the same number of links, we would be able to archive a significant uh, larger number, 85%. So just to recap, uh, in this work we quantify uh, pre preliminarily on the link program, there are two types, the content drift and the link rot and around 30% of the reference web resources are completely rotten that are not available online and archive, uh, are not archived. So that's why we want to uh, develop a, a link road predictor in order to, for the archival solution to proactively archive those links that are more likely to be rotten. We showed that the link and both link and article based feature could help. And um, preliminary. So thanks. So if you want to know more information, you can check this website on the hyperlink project on more stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, it taught me, apart from anything else at all, anybody doing scholarly publishing should be uh, learned in search engine optimization. Look at the URLs in the abstract. Thank you. Any any questions? Yes. So in your simulated archive, it was eighty four percent. Yep. What, is that because there's already a gap um, of of how much time by the time that you proactively archive it? How much time? Like a year's already gone by, or or what? Is that because are you asking the sixty four percent is? I don't, I don't fully get the question. So you simulated archive? Yep. All right. How much time has gone by? Because if the author did it at the time of writing, then presumably the simulated archive is 100%, right? And But by the time that you do it, it's 84%. So on average, how much time has gone by to get this reduction of 16%? Um, I think there are other solutions could be possible. That's one the author archive or the publisher archive them, uh, themselves. Uh, one, the paper <coughs> so we could uh, actually get a 100%. Right, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is, are you saying that you're simulating at the time of the publisher receiving or? No, I think uh, this similar study is more <coughs> about current. So it's the same time, come. so we, we use the links that are, uh, all the links, we sample the links, then we track the current archival solution performance, and then we, at this time of the, uh, at this time, we okay. use the predictor actually to, so it's a simulated, it's not okay. real. So it's simulated for all the yes. articles going yes. back. Exactly. And some of them are going to be old. Yes, so yes. Have exactly. I think it's uh, it's the whole range of the uh, LCVR publication, the data. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very, very, did you? Yeah, I think I just want to add a follow up uh, on that. So as what I said, I think uh, one of the, the Edinburgh and team also developed a, a plugin that could also help to just uh, the publisher of whatever one the paper is published to pro uh, proactively <coughs> archive all the links. So that's another solution I think to, to So if I could add a, a suggestion, um, last year Justin Brunel published a paper that measured how well things are archived in the archive, that could be an additional, because uh, right now you just look at the time map and if something's in there, you say it's archived, which often shows up in the archive, but it's not functionally archived in there, but when you go to actually interact with it, okay. that could be an additional analysis of study to say yep. it's archived, but not very well. Yes. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much.